Hello everybody, my name is Ahmed Bartanjad and I'm going to present you active population dumping of graded structures. My presentation will be in four parts. First, I'm going to give you a short introduction about this subject and then I will give you more details about the numerical study and the experimental results that we have done. And at the end, I will go to the conclusions. Let me start with the introduction first. Here, uh, a question that I would like to answer is why we are interested in vibration damping of related structures. In aerospace application, we know that a common way in order to reduce energy consumption of the system is to use lightweight structures. However, these structures have very low internal damping, uh, which may lead to large motion of vibrations, especially around the resonance frequency, that can cause parasitic fatigue failure. As you can see in this picture, which was reported in the literature, it shows the failure of some of the blades during the operation. We could also find some passive control techniques, such as uh, friction damping devices and uh, piezoelectric shunt damping, in order to reduce the vibration. However, these techniques um, are not uh, sometimes efficient because the control performance of these uh, passive control techniques are limited by the parameters of the control system. So in this paper and presentation, I would like to show you the application of active control system uh, on the uh, belated structure to see if we can uh, add some damping with active control system. So let me uh, show you some numerical study. As I mentioned before, we are interested in why damping of related discs known as GLOM, which are used a lot in different stages of jet engines. However, they are very complicated to either model them numerically or experimentally test them. So we decided to make a simpler model, uh, which uh, we call it uh, belated rail. It has five identical blades with the same uh, size, dimension, and shape as uh, those are uh, on the main structure. However, they are placed on the simpler support, which looks like a ray, uh, and then we manufacture them uh, using 3D printing. And then we also made a finite element model of it uh, using shell elements. The interesting thing about the bladed rail is uh, it has almost the same dynamic behavior as uh, the bladed disc. As you can see here in this picture, it shows the normalized first 17 resonance frequencies of the bladed rail, and we can see that the resonances appear in families of the mode. And in each family, there are five modes uh, because we have five blades on the uh, bladed rail. Between some uh, families, we have some isolated modes corresponding to the mode shape of the support. Depending on the rigidity of the support, it shows basically how far the resonance frequencies appear in each family. If the support is so rigid, the resonance frequencies are placed very close to each other, and if the support is soft, the resonance frequencies are far from each other in each family. Here you can see <coughs> uh, the first mode shape of the first family. Here you can see the first mode shape of the second family, and here you can see the first mode shape of the third family. We can see that uh, the mode shape of the first family corresponding to the uh, first bending of the blade, the second uh, mode shape of the family corresponding to the first torsion of the blade, and the mode shape of the third family corresponding to the uh, second bending of the blade. However, we realized that during the operation of the system, the first family of the mode is excited the most. So, in this study, we only focused on the damping of the first family of the mode. In order to implement active control system, we need an integration of uh, sensors, actuators, and control units, and we would like to implement piezoelectric patches for both sensing and actuating. Uh, the reason is because we can find uh, those piezoelectric patches in different size dimensions and usually we have a good coupling between the transducers and the structure. 
the optimal location of those patches uh, is the area of the structure where the strain distribution is maximized. Therefore, I am showing here the strain map of the first, third, and fifth uh, mode of the first family, and for the uh, second and third, uh, sorry, for the second and fourth, you can find uh, you can look at the paper. As you can see here, the strain distribution is maximized around the root of the blade. However, we cannot put the piezoelectric patches there because we are going to change and disturb the aerodynamic flow. Therefore, we have to uh, put the piezoelectric patches on the support and we realize that on the internal part of the support uh, where the blades are on the top, we have some local strain distribution. For example, let's look at the first mode. Uh, we have almost no deflection or deformation uh, on the first blade and we have almost no strain distribution uh, around this area and the internal part. However, we have some local strain distribution um, below the each blade, uh, for example, the second one, third one, fourth one, and also fifth one. This is also the case, for example, for the uh, third mode and fifth mode too. So, uh, we would like to map piezoelectric patches there. Five pairs of collocated piezoelectric patches uh, are placed in this order, as you can see here. And we are using those piezoelectric patches on the top as uh, actuators and those one on the bottom as sensors. Uh, since we would like to minimize the motion of the blades, we uh, consider a disturbance force on the tip of the first blade and we are measuring at the same time the displacement at the same location and we are using a transverse function between these two as the performance index. Thanks to a structural dynamic toolbox that we use in MATLAB, we can generate a steady space model uh, and according to, this, according to this system, we have six input and six output systems. The magnitude of frequency response function of open loop transverse function from each piezoelectric actuator to the collocated piezoelectric sensor is shown in here. The interesting observation of this figure is that for each pair of piezoelectric patches, the system is collocated in terms of pole zero pattern, where the zero appears before the corresponding pole. For example, for the first mode, we can see that we first see the zero, and then we are going to have the pole, which uh, corresponds to the resonance frequency of the structure. Such an open loop transverse function is similar to the one when we have force sensor uh, collocated with the force actuator. For such a system, uh, several uh, active control laws have been proposed and we would like to try two of them. One of them is a simple integrator with the feedback and feedback gain and the other one is a double integrator uh, with a real zero. We would like to use the same control law here uh, in order to implement on all the pairs of piezoelectric patches and then we look at the performance index from the uh, dis uh, disturbance force to the uh, displacement at the same location. Uh, this I should no uh, mention that this control law is named alpha control. In this picture, we can see the evolution of closed loop damping threshold when we close the loops one by one. And you can see that we are going to increase the damping by using both control laws. And when we close all the loops, we are going to have between 2 to 3% of damping using integral feedback. And when we use alpha controller, we are going to have up to 8% of damping. We can also see on the frequency response function of the performance index that uh, when we use integral force feedback, uh, we are going to have less control performance in comparison to the alpha controller. Uh, up to now, I have shown that what the belated rate is, what the possible optimal locations of piezoelectric patches are, and what the control laws uh, are basically. So let me show you some experimental tests that we have done. Uh, as I mentioned before, we manufacture the bladed rail and then we mount 
five pairs of piezoelectric patches in the same order as I explained during the numerical study. Uh, in this paper, uh, we would like to share with you the first experimental results that we obtained by closing only one pair of piezoelectric patch using simple integrator. And specifically, we only use four pairs of piezoelectric patches, uh, specifically this one. The next step, of course, is to uh, close all the loops uh, using both simple integrator and alpha controller and compare the uh, control performance. Uh, but in this case, uh, we only uh, use uh, four pair of piezoelectric patches. I also need to mention that uh, we use at the same time the piezoelectric actuator in order to implement the control force and also the disturbance force too. And at the same time, we are measuring the uh, voltage of the piezoelectric sensor and the tip velocity of the tips play. Uh, here you can see the magnitude of the open loop transfer function from force piezo actuator to the force piezo sensor. As what we observed during the numerical study, the experimental open loop transfer function is also calculated in terms of pole zero pattern and we can see a zero before each pole. There is also an interesting thing about this figure that the first zero is placed so close to the first pole and this is also the case for the uh, force per two. Uh, in active control system basically the distance between pole and zero shows how much the corresponding mode can be damped. Therefore we cannot expect to have a lot of damping on these two modes. Uh, we know that uh, the uh, control system is always stable for any feedback gain. However, this figure shows the uh, loop gain of the system in order to determine the phase and gain margin. Accordingly, the gain margin of the system is infinite and the phase margin is almost 90 degrees as we uh, expect. Here you can also see the frequency response function of the performance index uh, from the disturbance force applied by the force actuator to the tip velocity of the fifth blade. Uh, the blue curve corresponds to no control system and the purple one uh, shows the closed loop system when uh, the optimal value of the feedback gain is uh, used. Uh, so, uh, we can clearly see that we have almost no controllability on the first and also on the fourth mode. However, uh, we can uh, damp the second, third and also fifth mode uh, clearly here. Uh, okay, so that's uh, all about the details that I wanted to share with you and I would like to go to the conclusion. Uh, okay, so two active damping techniques have been successfully implemented on the bladed rail and numerically. The optimal locations of piezoelectric patches on the structure have been investigated. And um, the experimental, the first experimental results showed the promising result in line with the numerical design. Uh, so thank you very much for listening to this presentation. And if you have any question, uh, we will see each other in question and answer.